Oh. Hi everyone, welcome to this webinar series, the beginning of this webinar series. Karibuni sana, I hope that you are doing well today. I want to welcome all of you to uh, the beginning of this webinar series. My name is Anthony and in uh, this webinar we are going to be uh, talking about how to build a website for your business. But before we begin, uh, I want to first acknowledge all of you that have already come. Uh, I want to welcome each and every one of you that is here. Uh, I want to say um, welcome. Welcome to uh, the start of this webinar series. And so um, I want to say uh, Karibu to... Um, I saw Patrick. Patrick, you're the first to uh, say hello. Karibu sana. Thank you. Um, Ed, uh, Angie... Uh, or Ang Israel. I hope I've said your name correctly. Karibu, uh, hello to you. Um, Brian Kamau, uh, Raymond uh, uh, Chuemo, Chueno. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm muttering your names. Um, but uh, Paul, uh, Paul, Paul, Doug, uh, Douglas, um, Maingi, um, Martin, uh, BJ, BJOR. On, I'm not sure how to say that, uh, but you're saying that you're in. Karibu sana. We welcome you to this webinar series. It's going to be an interesting couple of days, uh, and so I want to welcome you. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. And um, I want to basically get us uh, started. But before we get started, I just want to um, make sure that all of you are streaming correctly. Now, in case uh, you have not received uh, an email from us, you most likely have not registered. I'm um, seeing more people streaming in. Karibu Nisana. Uh, Kevin, I see you. Unasema Ukondani. Uh, Tony, uh, uh, Karibu Sana. Hi as well. So, um, as I was saying, uh, if, you're not, if you've not received an email from us, then it's most likely that you're not getting reminders. And we are going to be doing this for the whole of this week. Uh, starting today at 10 a.m. East African time to uh, Friday. 10 a.m. It's going to be running about one hour. And so if you're not receiving any of these reminders, then you most likely have not um, got set up the reminders on your end. So I encourage you to go to deepafrica.com forward slash webinar, um, and you're going to be able to find um, the way in which you can be able to, uh, do, uh, to subscribe. So let me show you how you do that. Uh, deepafrica.com forward slash webinar. Now, right now, I have set up the, the website to show um, the live link um, that go to the uh, live YouTube. But uh, here below, you can set up a reminder. So I'd like to request all of you, if you've not received a reminder from me this, uh, this morning, the reason why this is important is because you may want to remember this, uh, you may want to get reminded uh, in the rest of the days um, from now up to Friday. So set that up on debuffka.com forward slash webinar and you're going to get, uh, get uh, set up. All right. So I want to welcome all of you. Thank you so much for coming uh, for this live stream. I'm still uh, seeing more people streaming in, but because we are all here and we, uh, we want to keep uh, not African time, but actual proper time as it is. So I'd like to get started. My name is Anthony. I work for Deep Africa and we are going to be uh, working together to create a small business website for you. A, a website that will be able to work for your business and will be able to assist you to get um, clients, to get noticed, have an online presence. And that's what we're going to be setting up. Now, um, this webinar is going to be a hands-on webinar, something that allows you to have, um, like, get basic skills. It's not supposed to be an advanced lesson. So if you are already familiar with web design, uh, it's wonderful that you're here and continue watching. Uh, but this webinar series is specifically goal, um, like aimed at people who do not understand web design, who do not know the first thing about how to design a website, who do not know where to start. This webinar is for them. It will allow them to be able to, um, to get going. So um, let's, let's, let's basically uh, do a few things. First, I'd want to introduce Deep Africa. Who is Deep Africa? What it is that we do? Um, so that you may have an understanding a bit of who we are. Probably you've not interacted with us. There are many of us who already have already interacted with us. Probably you got an email from, uh, from Deep Africa. 
telling you about the um, telling you about the the, the webinar. Uh, but there are some who may not already know who Deep Africa is. So let me introduce who Deep Africa is. We are an online solutions company. An online solutions company meaning that everything that has to do with an online presence, uh, we deal with it, and we we provide solutions to all of you that allow you to have uh, online an online presence and a robust online interaction that allows you to be able to interact with your clients, interact with your, uh, with your staff, interact with your service providers in a seamless way online. Now, considering the times that we are in right now, the era of social distancing and working from home, we believe that we can be able to provide you with solutions that give you really good value. Um, and allow you to make your business still efficient even though you're still working from home. Now, our main goal uh, as a company is to uh, take the world online. Uh, we are making the world um, interconnected and especially the world, our world. Africa uh, has gone a long way in terms of getting connected, but we are not where we, c we could be. And that's what we are doing as a company, helping the world get online. And by allowing every person, we believe every person deserves to have an online presence. Whoever you are, no matter what kind of business you run, there is something that the internet can be able to help you in terms of helping you do your business better. And that's what we are about. So we were established in 2004, so we have been around for a while. And the main solutions that we have are the ones that are listed there. We have uh, web hosting. We do web hosting, which is part of what we're going to discuss today uh, as we set up a website. The other thing we have are domain names. We create domain names. Uh, for our clients and register them and allow them to um, like a domain name is like Anthony my name is Anthony Anthony.co.ke uh, or Anthony.com that's a domain name we also provide web design services which is the main reason why you're here because ordinarily we provide web design services today we are teaching you how to do it yourself so uh, web design then we also provide training under the Gionta brand. Uh, training is part of what we are doing here. We also do like on the ground training. Last month we had a training on um, emails and how to set up custom emails for your business and how to get them running. Um, we also do systems. Now, let me just uh, put, put a plug right here. Uh, if you have uh, a business that does retail, that you, you are a retailer, you probably like sell goods to your clients either um, either physically or you do some type of retail that involves stock. We have an um, inventory management system that we have created and that is called uh, Gionta POS. So if you are interested in that, just go to pos.gionta.com and you'll find um, Hello. Not sure whether you're still there. I'm sorry, I experienced a power loss, um, TIA, this is Africa. <laughs> so um, I have switched to a backup solution, so I hope you are still there. Now um, I was using two screens, now I cannot be able to use both. Um, I don't know whether you've, you lose power a lot as well, but we are back. All right, perfect. So um, as I was saying that we are an online solutions company and we provide online solutions for all of our clients, allowing them to um, be able to have um, like a robust online solution, that are robust online solutions that allow them to um, make uh, their businesses more efficient, so be able to run their businesses in a more efficient way. And uh, that's what we, we really do well in. Okay, so um, now let's, uh, I'd like us to just move forward uh, and start the live uh, webinar. But before we start, like get started with building our website, I just want to lay the ground to help you understand what it is that we are going to be doing. The first is that we are, um, this webinar was created because we recognize that in the current world where we are in and the things that we are facing here in Kenya, we have, uh, not just in Kenya, around the world, these are crisis that is affecting us. And this crisis is one that, is, uh, that has made us change the way we do business, the way we, we work. And that's something that is going to be, um, it's most likely going to continue for a while. Now thinking about like the situation we are in right now, it's a situation that is probably not going to end uh, too soon. And unfortunately that's the case. So um, this webinar is, has been created with, the, with, the, um, with the, this fact in mind that we as business owners have to find new ways of adapting and having a website is the very best way 
of being able to have an online presence that is robust. The other thing about it is that um, there are many people who, even though they want to be online, because you're saying having an online presence is important, even though you want to be online, you, you may not at this point have um, the, 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 the funds available to be able to invest in somebody building a website for you. And so we are going to teach you how to build a website. Does this mean that you do not need a web designer anymore? It's unlikely that that's the case, just in the same way that um, probably if you are, um, like right now, you, there are services that you, you, you can do yourself, but you'd rather someone else do it for you because they are more experienced and they'll do a better job. So you will learn how to do web design today. But the other thing about it is that you, it, the website may still have issues along the way and you still need the services of a web designer. I'm going to try my best to save you having to use a web designer. However, if you'd like to get a web designer either because it seems a bit too complex for you or that you don't have the time for it, that's why we are here and we, we can be able to provide that service for you. Um, just to lay a few things, um, just lay a, lay a few things on, on the ground. First, I'm going to talk about the program and how the, the program is going to run from now up to Friday, day one to day five. But um, within the chats, and I'd like to just probably get there and see what's going on. I'm seeing that there are a number of people who are already in there, who are already, who are already on the uh, on the live stream, uh, and I want to um, thank all of you for having joined. Uh, now, there are a number of people who are there who are, um, let me just get, get to the live stream, deepafrica.com forward slash live. Yep, this is raw. Um, yeah, losing power makes, um, means that there are things that are a bit different. So, um, just to mention something. Um, What's going on? I'm seeing. Sorry. Uh, now, I, I noticed that um, there are quite a number of people who have made comments in there. I can see all of them, but at the same time, we have uh, a number of our staff who are out there who are helping to answer your questions. So uh, if you have any questions, just throw them out there. Uh, we have people who will help you answer them um, within, within the chat. Well, I can see George who is there. I can see Lucy. Um, I can see Barnes. You can ask questions. I can see John. Um, then um, just ask the questions and people are going to be able to uh, answer you. Um, if I'm not able to jump to it, that's fine. You uh, will you'll be able to uh, answer those questions. Uh, they'll be able to answer those questions in there. Okay. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the, the program. We are going to be running uh, a five-day program. The webinar will last, well, I hope, my goal is to keep the webinar within one hour. Uh, one hour is my target, so that if you're able to keep it within an hour, it would be a good thing. However, it may extend, and that's okay. If it, do, if it does extend, that's still fine, because um, the goal here is to help you have achieved. Now, let me explain the general goal of this program. I'm hoping that by the end of this week, you will have created a website for yourself, a website that you'll follow along and you will create a website for yourself. Part of the reason why we have staff who are available to assist is because um, we, we, as, you're, as you're doing things, some things might give you errors. So just post the questions that you have within that forum as you're doing it, as we are working together, and it's going to help you um, the people who are in there are going to help you resolve them. And so my advice would be, let's do these things together. And I'm going to be giving you assignments at the end of every session, things that you need to have done by the time the next session comes, so that you're able to build this out together and help you move along. So now we're going to have five days. Day one, is going, which is today, is going to be planning your website, preparing the things that you need before you start to build your website. And those, that's going to be basically the planning phase, this, um, which is today. I'm going to explain the things you need to do. Most of the planning you're going to do on your own at the end of this session, but I'm going to give you the ground, uh, set the ground for you and give you the things that you need to do. Now, day two, which is tomorrow, we are going to uh, set up the domain name. Um, and set up the framework that you're going to be using uh, to, to build the website. So you're going to get the domain name and hosting and 
I'm going to show you exactly how to do that and how to create the framework that you're going to use to build the website. So basically setting the foundation of your website. Day three is going to be, we are going to design our first page and I'm going to explain in detail how all of that happens and how we build, how we design, uh, how we are going to uh, achieve the design of your first page. Again, these things are not complex. I'm going to walk you through step by step. So don't be afraid. Don't let it bother you. It's going to be um, a step by step, step process that should not be scary. So even if you do not understand web design at all, this is still going to be for you. Then. And day four, we are going to design the rest of the other pages that are remaining. And in day five, we're going to add functionality. This includes things like live chat, um, Google Analytics, doing things like SEO, uh, optimizing for speed, um, and things like those. And probably if we have uh, the opportunity, we will cover things like payment integration and uh, WooCommerce. Uh, which are slightly a bit more complex than uh, just a beginner but if we are able to get to that and depending on uh, the, our levels of success then we'll have we'll we'll be able to do those all right so let's let's get started today is day one we are planning the website we are we want to plan how the website is going to look uh what the website is going to have what kind of functionality we hope to uh to embed on it what what we hope the website to have and um in planning the website, this is, I would say, the most critical part of any website. Um, the most critical part of any um, of building any uh, anything is a planning phase. Like if there's an architect, um, architects. The reason why architects exist is because they help to plan and show you how the building is going to look. You don't just wake up one day and start digging a foundation uh, and start building without knowing exactly what kind of house it's going to be. And so the planning phase is the most critical part. Now, if we are building a website for you as Deep Africa, you most likely are going to need um, to, to do this, this planning phase. We're going to need to walk you through this planning phase and you'll need to take some of these things yourself. Um, and now that we are doing it together, I'm going to show you how we also do it with our clients uh, and the things that I normally advise them to do. Then at the end of, this, uh, of today's session, you're going to be able to create your own um, your own bas basic plan of how the, your website is going to look. So before I jump in there, I'd just like to come back to the uh, questions and find out where, what people are, are, are saying. So let me just jump to that, uh, just a moment. First last live. I just want to see what people are, are talking about, um, whether there are any questions whether there are any concerns, uh, any comments that you guys have. Um, so just want to mute that so that you don't have to uh, hear me repeating. Um, okay, I'm seeing a lot of people in there. George, uh, Tony, uh, Duncan, um, Patrick, Bernice, uh, Diana, um, Wesley, Nixon, uh, Karibuni Sana. Douglas is saying that he had a problem registering for the Gionta POS. Um, now, um, the, now, if you have an, an issue with uh, the Gionta POS, probably let me give you a few things that may, um, that may help you out. Uh, one of the things that may uh, help you out within um, with the Gionta POS is going to deepafrica.com and just starting a live chat with us. If you start that out, uh, there are people there who are going to help you uh, get started. Uh, Joseph Mbogwa, Karibu Sana, uh, uh, Orina Victor, Karibu Sana. Um, yes, Victor, you're asking, so we are going to program our own website. Yes, the goal of this webinar is to help you create your own website. And so that's the goal. We are going to help you create your own website. So um, that's an essential goal. That's what we are trying to, to achieve for you. So by the end of this session, you will have... Um, you, you will have achieved. Um, now, Nicholas David is saying, could you give, please share a link of the slides, uh, please. Now, <laughs> that I don't want to give away what we're going to be talking about uh, going forward. So I will share a link of, uh, of the slides, but at the end of all the sessions. So once we uh, achieve the end of the sessions, we are going to, I'm going to share, uh, I'm going to share that with you. All right. All right. I don't know whether there are any other questions. If you have, just uh, post them in here and I'm going to be able to answer them or someone within the team is going to answer them. So let's just continue and say um, that 
as I've said, planning is a really important part of building a website. If you do not have a proper plan for your website, it's most likely that you are going to create a confused site. It's not going to have everything that you actually need. And um, today, I'm just going to cover two main areas um, and then also talk about some other areas that you need to think about when building a website. First is um, when you are building a website, you really need to think about why. What's your purpose? What's the goal of building the site? What are you trying to achieve? Um, again, that seems like a, a, a weird question to ask because doesn't every business need a website? But the thing is, different businesses need a website for different reasons. And so when thinking about your website, like before you even start, you need to think about things like, um, do, will I need a shop? Um, what, uh, what, how, do, how do I normally serve my clients and how then can I be able to then uh, make the website work for me? Um, so you need to ask yourself the reason why and understand the goal that you, you're aiming for so that as you start writing down these things, because I'm going to give you recommendations for what a general business would have, but the things that you're going to, um, the things that you're going to, to decide for yourself are affecting your own business, specifically your own business. So that's something to think about a lot. So let's think about this. Um, two things, the two areas that mostly affect the planning phase and would either make or break, photos and text. And I'm going to explain each in detail. Now, photos are, um, are the, the building block, one of the biggest building blocks to any website. Uh, a website that has well curated photos, photos that have been selected well, either taken well or obtained from stock photo uh, places, uh, photos that are going to help impact your business positively. Again, on the other side, if you have, you've not selected your photos well, if you have not done a good job in doing that, then you're actually going to have challenges in um, in getting your website um, looking the way to, it should be or performing the way it should be. So photos are really the essential part. The other part is text, and we're going to jump to that as we close uh, to the end of the, uh, of the webinar. But let's talk about photos. Now, um, when, when taking, let, let me, sh let me, let me uh, give you um, like an example. If, if you're having a website um, and you, you are selling a service, generally you expect to see that, okay, if you are the one visiting a website, for instance, you subliminally in your mind, you're expecting to see yourself. You're expecting to see something that relates to you. Now, let me say something that for people who are building websites, mm, not building, visiting websites, you are looking for two things. And think about the last time you visited any website. You're looking for two things. Number one, do I trust this person? Let, let's say um, you're visiting a website that is new to you. The first question that you have is, is this a legit site? Do I trust this person? Does he have, um, a, 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 will he con me? Will I lose um, will I lose my privacy if I use it? Will I lose money if I spend money through it? And so the question of trust, the first one, is the question of trust. It's a very critical one. That do I trust this person? And the question of trust is answered specifically in the pictures. Now, in the pictures that you choose, they are going to convey trust. Like having a, a they are going to have a calming effect uh, to a person compared to if the photos did not look as good. So that's the first one. Trust. Do I trust them? The other question that someone else is someone is asking themselves when visiting a website is do you have what I want and um, photos also play a really important part in answering that question that do you have what I want because you're going to show for instance your products your products are going to be able to show people that yes yeah by there I'm in the right place I'm in the right place that is able to provide me with the things that I'm looking for so now think about it when you're collecting your photos you need to have those two questions in mind that am I going to convince the visitor of this website that I have that I can be trusted and based on the pictures that I have on there. Number two, do I, do, do, will the person be able to trust that I have what they are looking for? I don't know whether that makes sense, but that's, that's a really key question, that do you have what I want? And um, you need to answer that through, you, through those questions. Again, I don't want to hit, uh, beat a horse to death by explaining that to, for too long, but um, I want to now tell you about how basically you can go about taking pictures. There are, um, there are three things that you need to do. You either need to take pictures 
or collect pictures online or both and the third is that you need to prepare them um, for your website because again you don't just take a photo online and take it to the website so let's talk about taking pictures now um, many of the clients that we have dealt with have had issues with photos because one of the primary issues with their, them in photos is that they do not have a good camera uh, probably they're using um, a, a smartphone that doesn't have very good a very good resolution so uh, it's probably not something that they they want to use or probably they don't know how to use their cameras now um there are professional photographers out there and i would advise that you actually engage if you are really serious about getting a good website i would encourage you to engage a professional uh, photographer because having a professional photographer will allow you to actually be able to figure out uh, be able to get um be able to um like capture things in a unique way one thing that um uh, taking photos yourself will not do number one you're not an expert in that area and again that doesn't mean that you can't take the photos but the, the photographer has a unique way of being able to display the things that you're doing that I can take a photo of this mouse for instance and it will look okay but if a photographer take uh, comes in to take to take this photo they're not just going to going to go and snap they are going to actually look at it look at the lighting and the way the lighting is playing on that and also probably set up their own lighting they have better equipment Equipment. so they are going to be able to capture much better photos for you now in case you don't have again we are trying to build a website ourselves so you may not have the luxury of being able to hire your own professional photographer then go for the next best thing these phones have really good cameras this particularly is an Infinix I know people have a lot of things to say about Infinix phones uh, but this has a good enough camera to take good enough photos uh, of, of your products now the thing you need to take a, take a notice about when you're taking in photos is that um, use natural light as much as you can so for instance right now I am seated right in front of a window and as you can probably see my face is well illuminated um, and you can be able to see me like clearly I'll just check in whether my face is properly illuminated you can be able to see me clearly um, like when uh, like observing me um, and that's the thing um, when you need to uh, use natural light because natural light is going to look uh, well natural and the other thing about it is that you want to use um, the, the things that you have to your advantage I have a light here let me show you this is a delight lamp uh, this delight lamp can be used to take away the shadows of photos so just in case you want to take like a picture of like small items you can place that light and uh, and switch it on and have it directly um, um, lighting the, the object that you want to take photos of something else that i've found to be very useful is that if you want to take a photo of things that are small like a mouse like this or a phone uh and that you can be able to like set it on 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 a table um the way i would go about it is getting you know you know the the paper that is used for presentations the big big white paper that when when people are in conferences like if you are all together in a place i would be using that paper to explain that paper you take it you 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 put like masking tape on the wall on it and then drape it on like you put it in a way that it's draping um, draping like it's it's part of it is on the wall and part of it is on a table now you place your item on that table and probably find a light to just light that probably using like the natural light if you're next to a window to light that and you're going to have very clean white background very beautiful photos that's one way that you can go about it and that's practically almost free because like those papers you may if you're doing training you may have them lying around or you can buy it for I believe less than uh, probably less than 200 I don't know how much it costs here in Kenya to uh, to get that so that's an option that you have so the first option is taking your own pictures now um, the thing is um, since you you want to have a good mix of your own photos and stock photos so even if you're going to I'm going to talk about stock photos and I'm going to show you how to collect stock photos in the next video uh, in the next uh, in the next like uh, couple of seconds but um, you want to have a mix of, of both your own photos and stock photos so I would advise that if you are able to take a, a photo of your business location use a small a smartphone like this and just take a photo of your business location take a photo probably of your staff probably serving clients and things like those or even like get someone who um, looks pretty um, guys and ladies to pose as clients and you can be able to uh, like show people interacting that will go a long way and that may not cost a lot of 
money to do uh, and you can even use your own self and ask someone to take photos of you posing as a client being assisted things like those they'll help you make your your, your business seem authentic and not even just seem authentic be authentic people will actually be able to see you but now um, you, if you do not have a professional photographer you want to supplement your photos with um, with with uh, stock photos so the way i normally do uh, i use stock photos i use stock photos by um using a number of free online tools let me talk about one um now okay there yeah, let me go back here there are there are free tools and paid tools now the free tools are good um they have really good photos and i'll talk about the disadvantages of those when i get to them but i i also prefer using a paid source of photos because i get really good good photos from that let me show you what i use i use envato dot um actually elements dot envato dot com i hope you can be able to see the url up there that's elements dot envato dot com or you can just google envato elements and it's going to show you now the thing about envato elements is that it has a lot of really these are like photos that i downloaded recently uh, or pictures close to what i downloaded recently and you can see it has a lot of african faces now one of the disadvantages of using the free sources of photos that i'm going to share about right now is that you won't find a lot of really well taken photos especially of african faces and african people and that i've found to be one of the main reasons why i use uh, envato elements you do not you, you don't get really good high quality photos of african faces and um but as you can see the, there's a wide selection of really good african faces now so that i can demonstrate for you what we're going to be doing um, the website that I'm going to be building to show you how to build websites is going to be a website for uh, a wedding, a wedding dress uh, selling business, um, a business that sells, uh, that sells. <laughs> sorry, I, would, I, <laughs> I need to take, be, be a bit more serious, uh, a, um, a business that sells wedding dresses. Um, so that's that's the kind of website we're going to uh, we're going to create and so um, I'm going to like take you through the process of how I would search for photos first on Envato Elements so I would go to Envato Elements and search for like wedding dresses and I'll show you the first thing that is going we are going to have a problem with is um, let's navigate to photos mm, actually there are no photos of wedding dresses i misspelled that that's wedding dresses and there we go so we have about 3000 photos of wedding dresses now the problem with this specific search that i've done is that well we are going to find pictures like this uh, of wedding dresses which i'm clicking on a new tab just in case you don't know how to do that just a quick tip that is not part of this webinar but something that may be useful you see this mouse wheel the one that scrolls like the way i'm scrolling right now if you click on it like this it's hard to click when it's not here when you click like that it opens in a new tab so that's something you probably didn't know um so um wedding dresses so i've clicked on those three the problem that i'm seeing with the uh, the most of the pictures well a number of the pictures here is that many of them are of white people and so um that's that's something that you'll also find here naturally so the thing you want to do is um do like wedding dresses african um it probably is going to get a photo of an african african american well or african um and here we are uh we have photos of africans like wedding and that's that's a good thing but the thing is well these photos are going to work for us but they are more of wedding photos not of wedding dresses and so um we're going to figure out how to go about that now the other one of the disadvantages of not having your own photos or taking your own photos is that um it's going to you're, you're going to have to rely on photos that other people have taken and they may not really completely work for you in this case because i'm creating a fake business i don't have any photos of my own to take or my own dresses that i could have gotten a model to wear and i take photos of those and so i'm going to have to use stock photos and you're going to see the kind of problems you're going to run into uh, but once i find a photo like this i would click on download now this gives me that i'm able to download um download it to my to my um a folder now what i normally do i create um 
uh, a folder where all of these photos are going to be. So you can see like right now, what I've done is that I've created a folder called um, webinar. The photos that we're going to, uh, the website we're going, well, webinar we're going to be creating. And you can see I've already downloaded quite a large number of photos. I put them all together because I want, there the are things that we're going to do after this and I'm going to show you. Uh, so I want to put all of these photos together in one place. So I'll download like that. And that's basically the, the way I would go about it. Just basically, it's, no, it's not rocket science, so it should be something you're able to do. Um, some of these photos are already downloaded. So once you, um, once you download the photos, um, there's going to be a next step. But so that I do not um, go ahead without uh, showing you uh, the free sources, I also use Pixabay uh, a lot. It's actually a very good source. That's P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. Dot com. Pixabay is a great source of photos. Uh, many of them are not going to be African photos. So let's do the same th thing. Uh, wedding dress. Just the word wedding dress. And you can see there are actually like 1,300 photos of wedding dresses. But as you, real you realize, many of these photos are, um, don't have African faces. And so that's, that's a challenge. So a wedding dress, African. Wedding dress African, and we actually do not have, we only have like this photo here, and this photo here, and this photo here of uh, African wedding dresses. Um, and that's, that's part of the challenge that I have with uh, free sources. Again, it's, it's not something bad because, again, I don't have to have a face on it. So, like, for instance, one of the other ways I could go about this is finding a photo, and I had actually found a few, uh, finding a photo that does not have any face on it. Or if you don't mind having Americans um, and um, uh, people of, who are not really Africans on your photos, on your wedding, uh, on your photos, that may be okay. But you'd notice like a picture like this or a picture like this are uh, good photos. I actually have not taken this. Let me get that. Our, uh, our places, our photos that do not necessarily, are not necessarily like African. They may not have uh, come from Africa. Uh, but they are they are well taken and it does not show nobody can be able to tell that this was uh it, it was an african uh it, it was an um, well i don't know who it is i also don't know who it is so um so you'd come now when you're you're, you're downloading you want to download you don't want to download it to be very large because you're going to resize it so i would download as 1920 by 1412 um because that's 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 a good size for us um and it's going to go and save on that same place that I'd gone to save it. So that's the first that's the first free place. I'm going to show you the other free places that I also like. I also like Pexels. Pexels.com. Pexels.com is a good place to find photos for your website. Um, it also has you can search for the same thing. Now for the sake of time I'm not going to search just the way I showed you. Then we have unsplash.com. Unsplash is also a very good site. The thing about Unsplash is that you are not able to download it in the size that you want. And so you, you, you have to download it uh, as is and resize later on. But it's also a very high quality. I would actually say that when choosing the, the, the places to go, I would choose uh, Unsplash, then choose um, Pexels. No, actually, Unsplash, then uh, Pixabay then Pexels as the sources of free, uh, free photos. And there are other places where you can find like paid photos uh, other than Envato Elements, but I like Envato Elements because, oh, by the way, something I didn't mention about Envato Elements. You pay once and you download as much as you want. And so that's beautiful. The, other, the, the, the challenge that I find with other, other places, other, um, um, other stock photo providers that sell them is that they sell you per piece of photo, which to me, I think it does not work for me because I don't know whether I'm going to need that, uh, be able to use that photo once I download it. So if I'll have paid for it, then what happens? So um, I, I like I like Envato Elements. It does not have a very huge selection like other places, but it has a wide selection enough for me to be able to, uh, to make use of it. Um, and so once we have obtained all of the photos, uh, the photos that we need for, um, for our website, now I've already obtained those. Um, and here they are. I'll just make them big. Uh, I'd already obtained the photos that I want. Um, let me hide this preview plane. 
Uh, I'd already obtained the photos that I want. Let me just delete this because that's what we are going to do. Um, then after that, we are going to need to resize them. Now let me explain something. Uh, normal websites, normal, many people use machines that are that don't have a very high resolution. What I mean by resolution is that they are not very large. So for instance, let's take an example of this photo here. Uh, if, if you can be able to squint enough and read, this photo's dimensions is 4,000 um, here, 4,000, uh, no, 3,840 pixels by 5,760 pixels. Let me explain what a pixel is. A pixel is a dot on a screen. Every screen is comprised of pixels. Right now, that's the way they make it. Probably they're going to make it differently uh, some other time. So if you look like at your phone very closely, these days it's not as possible because the pixels are so small. But especially if you look at older phones, like the Nokia, old Nokia phones, you could see that they have dots. You could see dots in there, and those are pixels. So um, normal computers, like the computer I'm using now, has 1920 by 1080 pixels. Um, so it has 1920 uh, pixels, 1920 dots uh, across this way, and 1080 dots coming down this way. And so uh, if I have a picture that is that has like uh, 3,000 pixels, it means it has 3,000 pixels this way and 5,000 pixels this way, it's way too large. The problem with having a very large image like that is like for instance the photo that I'm all focused on right now is 8 MBs large. It's 8 MBs, it's a huge photo. Now considering that I'm going to have, like on my home page, I'm going to have more than like, um, let's say, five to six photos on my home page that means that i'm going to my my website my home page is going to be 40 mbs uh that's a really huge website it's going to take forever to load people are never going to wait for that long for that website to load so it's not going to be a good it's going to have a very bad experience people are going to have a very bad experience so what i normally do is i, I resize my photos i resize them down so that i can I, I can at least i know i'm not going to upload a very huge photo so let me show you how i do it i use a, a tool called photoscape now photoscape is free photoscape is a free uh, photo editing tool i know there is um there are tools that are already all available um that, that are available for you to use um, um, already on your machine. If you're using a Windows machine, you probably already have the photos, photo editing one. But I like Photoscape a lot. So you can go to, you can download Photoscape. I can, let me just show you where to get Photoscape. Uh, Photoscape X download. It's a free software. It's not pirated. One of the things that I live by is that I do not. Uh, I do not steal software. I do not steal photos. I do not steal software. Let me mention by this something, just a quick plug about photos. Please do not take photos from places that have not allowed you to take them. Number one, it's wrong. It's basically wrong. Don't do that. I don't think that's something very ethical to do. But number two, uh, the other problem with it is that you're going to have, uh, you, you may find yourself on the wrong side of the law because you are actually breaching copyright. So don't use other people's photos that have not allowed you. Now the websites that I've shown you, the, um, the Pixabay, Unsplash, they allow you to use completely freely reusable images without having to credit the author, which is a good thing. So, um, and again, for the stock photography place, I'm paying for it, so I'm doing it, um, I'm doing it legally. So Photoscape, let's get back to Photoscape. You download Photoscape X, there's a, there's a bit of a trick around the, uh, downloading Photoscape X because you want to get the free version. Here, you notice uh, photos x.photoscape.org, the free version Photoscape X here. You want to download that. It's going to navigate you to the Microsoft Store where you're going to be able to download that. Um, that's the way you get Photoscape. It's a really good software um, to, to, to edit photos. And let me show you what it can do. So um, let's get back to the uh, photos here. Now, the photos that we have here are very large. Now, as I was mentioning, this photo is really big. It's more than what we need. Because, for instance, if it was filling our screen, it would fill our screen like around, around there. And you see, it's still at 49% zoom. If I zoomed in to be one for one, like um, exactly 100%, this is how it looked. 
and it's way too big. It's way too big. So what normally happens when there's a browser that is um, that is viewing this photo, the browser is going to resize that photo down, but it's still going to be as big. It's still going to be the big um, several MB um, um, photo that it, you do not want to have. So the way I would normally go about resizing the photos uh, first is I would let's, let's just close this. I would take all of my photos by clicking on the first photo, clicking, uh, holding down shift and holding the, la the last photo. Um, and the thing that that allows me to do is if I'm selecting, uh, it's not allowing me to do that, just a moment. I'm actually on the editor. So let's get to the viewer. Sorry, uh, click on the viewer, not the editor. So click on that first image, click on the last image. So I just select all of them. So you're clicking the first image, holding down shift clicking on the last image to select all of them. Or the other way you can do it is by selecting, like dragging and selecting all that that way and drag them to this batch section here. When you drag it to the batch section, it's going to allow you to batch edit all of these photos together. So that allows you to save time. So you can resize. Now you, we want the, um, the width not to be more now again i told you that my screen is 1920 by 1080 many screens out there are 1366 wide like 1366 pixels wide so uh, to get an in-between i would go for um like picking about 1500 or 1600 uh, pixels well seems okay um as a width it's slightly larger than most screens but it's not as large as the big screen so if it needs to be stretched it will be stretched just a bit to fit a screen like the one i'm using which is still okay so once i do that i would i'm i'm, I'm checking the width to be 1600 wide because i don't want it to be very large now the other thing about it is that uh you can also do like the long edge and the long edge so if like a photo that is vertical like this and i have a lot of vertical images here i want to make them um instead of now doing the width i can select the long edge whether that's the width or the height to be 1600 pixels large the main goal of why we are doing this right now is to reduce their size to make them smaller so that they do not uh, affect our uh, our loading speeds when we are loading when we are creating the website so um i would say save and then create it in a subfolder that we are going to call output. Let's actually call it resized. Resized, and then probably say 1600. Now what I'm sharing with you is the way I normally do it. And there are many ways of doing it, but that's the way I normally do it when building websites. Um, now the JPEG quality, you probably want to set it at like 80, um, at around 80, 80, around 80 should be okay because 80, um, it will have lost quality just a bit, but it will still be good enough. Now, the, that remember, the goal for why we are doing all of this is to reduce its size so that it's not as large. So let's do let's do OK, and it's, um, it batch ed edits all of them into the resized um, size. And so you see the resized folder here. Let's compare. This photo, this photo here is 16 MBs large. Ooh, that's a huge photo. Now, this photo... The same photo here is 169 kilobytes. So like 0 0.16 KBs compared to this, that is um, 16 megabytes. So 16 megabytes compared to 0. Point something uh, megabytes is, is quite a difference. Now, now that we have these photos, you notice that they'll not really have lost their resolution too much. They don't look bad. They still look okay. They may not be as as um, as high resolution as the other photos, but we have at least made them to be uh, within a resolution that makes a bit more sense. And you'll notice that uh, right now, this folder here is 135 megabytes. Uh, this folder here, of all the same photos, is about four four megabytes. So we've reduced it significantly, and this is a good start. We are going to need to do more of that, but that's the first. Now, now that we have reduced their sizes, we want to now move to the resized folder. Uh, close. You want to move to the resized folder, and you want to um, now get these photos ready. Now, we want to think about like what we're going to use. Now, for, for websites, we are going to use, we're going to need website uh, photos that are long, like this, like um, that are um, landscape, but you also need to have a number of portrait photos. Now, let's say you have most of your photos as portrait. So what do you do? Uh, do you, do you um, 
what do you do to fix that? Now, the way I'd go about fixing that would be going to the editor, like the way I've done there. Um, let's just go to uh, get back to viewer, so that we go get to the photo we want. Right click and say edit. So here we are with this photo. Now you want to probably change its size, um, uh, change change it, uh, changes to become um, um, to become landscape. And because we still have a lot here, we can do two things. We can actually crop this to be like there. So with this, now you you can see that's that's a beautiful photo right there, um, and it still works for us because. Um, the bride is still within um, within a frame, so let's crop it like that, and um, all right, that's a photo we have, and we can click on save. Now we want to save as now because we my my, my the thing about it is when you're saving a cropped photo, you want to uh, you want to still retain the photo you had originally. Uh, so like I would rename it to cropped. And say okay and there it is so I have a photo that was previously um, previously that way I have now cropped it to look like that I hope you're able to follow what I did let me do another one just for demonstration purpose um, let's take this photo um, now this is a, this may be actually a bit troublesome to crop because uh, it's really zoomed in but let's let's try and see what happens so let's crop it to be uh, probably like a square let's make it a square photo so I select one to one I drag from the point I want to is to crop and to the place I want it to finish then I can hold down hold down the box and move it around so you're able to um, put the photo exactly where you want it to be and I've cropped it to be right at the center so I have a square photo of a beautiful bride let's save that again Just that we have um, how big the photo is. It's actually not very large. It helps you to see, and you're able to see like if you reduce it, it becomes lower. Now the problem with reducing is too much. Like right now, the more we reduce it, hmm. Now you notice that if I reduce it like now to um, to zero, it's 19 kilobytes. Yes, but it's not a photo that is nice to look at. Now you notice that actually like I reduce it to 43 percent, it still looks okay. It doesn't look bad, and we can save it as that. And so um, for me, I like putting it somewhere around the 80% because 80% is not bad. Um, it's not a bad uh, resolution to have. Um, so um, that's it. Um, so let's say OK. And let's say save as. Um, all right. Um, let's, let's say OK, save as. And we want to say this is square because we save this as square. George, thank you. Uh, say save. Um, and once you click save, there we are. Let me just make sure that we are still uh, running, whether everything is still going on okay. Yes, I can see uh, everyone is there. John is answering questions. Um, yes, thank you, John, for assisting with that. Um, yes, now let me let me answer something about en uh, Envato Elements. I paid... Um, I believe what would be, I think, 20,000 shillings um, for Envato Elements for a whole year, like a whole year worth. Now, that's me. I am a web designer. I use photos all the time. You probably don't want to do that yourself. Um, um, it's, it's something that may, may not be uh, logical for you if you're not a web designer or a graphics designer. And so I would say, like, do the month one. Do the month one, get all the photos you need, and then, um, like, unsubscribe if you need to. Yeah. So you can get the, man, the monthly one. OK, now something I'm being encouraged to do, um, probably from the rest of you, you can try and pause the live video. It will still be here. Um, you'll still find it. You can try out the things that I'm talking about. Because again, the goal of this live stream is to allow you to be able to use this thing yourself. You can be able to use, like, uh, do these things yourself. Um, so um, I would like you to probably pause and try these things out yourself. Try to download a photo, try to crop a photo. If you have issues, um, please address them. We are going to be able to 
um, assist you there. If we drop out of this live stream and it's no longer available, post a comment, we should be able to reply. Or you can also then go to deepafrica.com and start a live, uh, a live chat with us. Uh, and we're going to be able to assist you uh, where you're having trouble. Okay, so I'd like to move on. I have just six minutes and have not covered um, the second part of what we were supposed to talk about. We were supposed to talk about uh, texts and this I'm going to um, not just brush through, but I just want to talk, say something small, is after we have resized our photos the way we have, like right now, there's a resized 1600, they're still too large because again, as you, you can see, um, 4, four MBs is very large for photos. You want them to be smaller. You want to make them to make them as small as possible. So the tool that I use for that is called tinyjpg.com. Tinyjpg.com is a really good site to compress images. Now, here's something that they, they say, that you, you're able to um, losslessly um, reduce the image uh, the image size without reducing its quality. Now look at this photo here, for instance. It's their demonstration photo. One photo is 600 um, kilobytes. The other photo is 162 kilobytes. And you literally cannot tell the difference between the two photos. I don't know what they do. Uh, someone may call it magic. I, I think it's really, really, really cool. And let's see what happens. So I have 25 photos. It normally like restricts you from using, from like um, like uploading more than 20 photos. So let's Let's select, let's select just a batch of a few photos. Uh, let's actually try and select 20. Uh, how many items are selected? Uh, 16 items are selected. Let's add a few more, 17, 18. Uh, let's actually do it logically. So that to there, that's 20 items. So I'll remember to get these. So I'll get these, drag them onto tiny JPG like that and they'll start compressing. Now you'll notice that it started, started to compress my photos, and a photo that was big like this is now 190 KBs. It was 250 kilobytes, it's now 90 KBs. And that's pretty awesome, a pretty awesome uh, saving. Pretty awesome saving. Um, so um, it's, it's doing all of that, it's, it's, it's downloading that, uh, it's, it's compressing them, uploading, compressing, uploading, compressing. Uh, let's see. Um, how, how, how small our files are going to be by the end of this. So once it's finished compressing like that, you download all. Now once you click on download all, I'll put them on the resize 1600. So it's the tinyfied resize 1600. Now you notice that we got from very large photos, then resize them, then compress them. Now, this is what you have to do if you want your website to load quickly. You have to do... Now, notice we moved from uh, 4 MBs to 2.6 MBs, which is really awesome. That's a huge uh, reduction. So, um, that's, now I would say that these photos are basically ready for me to use on my website. Now, if you want to crop, like you come back later and you want to crop some of the photos that you had, let's say you want to crop these ones here. Notice this has been saved as tinyfied, and I'll extract it so that I, I'm able to, to track what is where, I'll not overwrite, I'll just have it as a folder called Tinyfied. So you notice that we have uh, in our folder, we have the webinar folder that has the resized photos that we resized down, that has also then the Tinyfied photos. So you'll notice that this, this is 2.6 MBs. This folder of all the photos without the Tinyfied is 7 MBs. Uh, oh no, not 7 MBs, it's 4.6 MBs, and this folder, without the other folder in there, is 135 MBs. Now you notice that we've reduced it from 135 MBs to 2 MBs, and these photos are basically still the same quality, they don't look any different from originally, but they are now ready for use online, and the, your website is going to load much faster that way. So. Um, that's that. Now I've talked about this really uh, moved quickly. Um, time is running short uh, and my battery, remember I don't have lights, they've just gone and my battery is almost gone so I want to finish this up. Uh, let me talk about text. Um, with text, 
um, the text is going to be another very essential part of your website. In answering the questions that do you have what I want and can I trust you, the text is going to be a really important part of that. So the way you go about it first is uh, you want to think about each and everything that you want your clients to see. You want They are going to have a home page for instance, so you want to have that. So let me give you the list of things that you need to create and this is going to be your assignment for the day. You're going to need to create an about uh, page for your business. A pr um, Products, product descriptions for every one of your uh, products that you have, uh, testimonials of your clients. Now, if you don't have a business and you're just trying to learn how to do web design, you can um, just try to create fake ones. If you have an actual business, don't make them fake. Be authentic. Look for your clients. I'll show you how to get these things. Uh, case studies and FAQs. And um, so I want to uh, talk about each of them individually. Then we can close. Um, the about, the about page of your business is going to be a very critical one because it's most likely going to be one of the most visited pages outside of your home page. And so you want to talk about uh, something very important. Now, notice that though it's saying that it's about, it's like about the business, it's, people don't really care about you. They don't really care about you, they care about themselves. So when they are coming to your website, they are not coming because they are coming out of charity for you, they are coming out of their own self-interest. That's the thing about the world out there. It may seem harsh to say, but it's the truth. And so for that reason, when you're setting up an about page, it needs to reflect their goals, their ambitions, the thing they're hoping to achieve, and how you are able to help them. Something else that may really help you create a home page is, uh, not a home page, an about page, is talking about yourself in relation to them. Now, talking about your own story in relation to them. So let's say you want to, you probably run um, a wedding dress business. You can talk about how uh, you had trouble finding uh, good wedding dresses for yourself in Kenya, and so you decided to start that, that business. Uh, to, um, and how, like you can talk about how the difficulty you had, the kind of bad dresses that you, you are able to get, and you, you wish that you are able to, um, to find dresses that, 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 that suit your taste, and everything that was available was overseas, and you had to ship it. And so now you, that's the reason why you created the business. Now that shows like the past of where you came from and that you relate with them. Remember you're answering the question, can I trust you? And that, that goes bing, 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 bing. Yes, I can trust this person, they are like me. Number two, do you have what I want? Bing, 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 bing. They have wedding dresses and they have wedding dresses for a person like me. So you want to talk about uh, your own story of how you began. You also want to talk about um, the, the, the solutions that you provide, not, in a, not, not like the way you do it in the products page, but you want, generally want to say, here is a problem that we solve in the world. Here is why we exist as a business. Um, and so that's the about page. Now, I'm going to uh, probably post in, in the comment sections below. After, after I, I publish this, just watch out for it. I'm going to post a number of tutorials on how to create a great about page um, and, and a number of articles that help you create a great about page. Use that for the assignment today. Number two um, is uh, the, the product descriptions. Now, this is the most critical part of your website. The home page is going to be an important one, but if you do not have clear product descriptions, if you do not have clear prices, clear benefits, clear features of those products, then you're actually putting yourself up for failure. So I'd like you to list out every one of your products, every, every single one of the products that you do. List them out on a list, on, a, on an empty um, sheet of paper like this. List it out like one, two, three, four, five, six, here are the products that I have. Now have that list, tear, tear out a page like this of, those, of, those, uh, of, that, of that list, set it aside, and now start with product number one and start writing down. What are, what can I describe this product to do? What does this product do? How does it help people? And then you can then list the price in there and you can list out the benefits. The benefits of why a person needs to have this product. List out the features. Um, the features of, uh, the features that this product has um, that then relate to the benefits of that, of that product. If you, have, um, if you have the ability to do it, just take a, um, um, a, your cell phone, be in front of, uh, of, a, of, a com, um, or like of a window, like the way I am right now, and record yourself talking about the product. And just say what this product is for, why people should use it, record that video, you want to put it as part of your text. Do that for every product. I cannot overemphasize how important this is. You're going to have a very difficult time building out your website if you're going to be thinking it up 
as you try to design. So write it down on a paper. Part of the reason why we've not yet even started building a site yet is because if you plan this website well, you're going to finish it quickly. If you don't plan it well, you're not going to have a very good website or a website that you can be proud of. So take that step really, really seriously. Then in the testimonial section, find clients who have things to say about you. Let's say you have served, let's say 10 clients. Contact all of them. Just give them a call and tell them that I'm trying to build a website and I'm trying to tell other people of the kind of experience that they expect to have when dealing with me. So because you are one of my clients, I really would request you that you'd write down, even on WhatsApp, just write down, just take a moment and write like um, three paragraphs explaining how your experience was when you you are you you when I served you when I did this for you maybe I was making cake for you now tell me about the kind of experience that you had what kind of cake was it give your own story tell people what you think about my business now ask them to tell those stories and then find one one photo of them that you can be able to use and store it store it in the folders that we are going to have now case studies Case studies are a bit more complex, more than testimonials, because you are explaining, you're taking people through a journey of how you did something for someone. And this works especially well uh, for a business that does like solutions like websites like the way we do, uh, or that you sell a bit of a more complex solution. But even when you're doing something simple, like you're, you're baking cakes, birthday cakes, you can actually have, instead of case, cake, uh, case studies, you can actually have like uh, um, uh, photos of cakes that you've done in the past. So you can do a gallery of all the kids that all the cakes you've done in the past and probably a small explanation you don't have to have an explanation for things like those you can have that um if let's say it's wedding dresses uh like for me i'm going to look for photos that's part of what i'm going to be doing today uh <laughs> if the electricity comes back i'm going to create photos i'm going to look for photos of weddings that are happening and that's going to be my case study page and then faqs are frequently asked questions think about the things that most your most of your clients ask many of the times uh, if you have frequently asked questions for each product do that if you have frequently asked questions generally for you as a business like do you deliver uh, how much do you charge for delivery uh, do you uh, do you offer returns can i um, can, do you offer refunds what are you, what is your policy around that you can be able to write that down there i'm rushing a bit because my battery is almost out and i may uh, probably have to shut down i'm really sorry um again um not my fault but again it is my fault i should have planned better maybe i'm sorry generally i'm sorry that i'm going to uh th th that i'm rushing a bit um now that's the thing faqs those are the things you need to collect um now that's the assignment for you today you need to collect those so that you're able to be able to build a site that you can be proud of uh, I'd like to open it up for questions. I know probably other questions have been asked. I've not been able to run this the way I would have wanted it because uh, questions may have been coming in. Um, but I'm seeing questions uh, having arrived. Uh, let's see how I am able to... Um, again, the way you get to the live... Every day, by the way, the way you get to the live stream is debuffrica.com forward slash live. Every time that we're going to have a live stream, you, when you go to that, it's going to redirect you to the link of the latest live stream for that day. So in this case, it's debuffrica.com forward slash live. Um, I just want to load the comments. That's the reason I'm loading this. Um, all right. Uh, do you have questions? Please post them. Um, and I'm going to try and answer the number that I can uh, at this time. So... Um, Vikram, thank you so much. Uh, Vikram is from India. He's tuning in. Thank you so much, Vikram, for coming. Um, Agnes was asking what's the main difference between a blog and a website. What factors do you want to consider uh, choosing a blog or a website for a business? Now, um, a blog is a website, essentially. Because, for instance, like we, for us as a company, we have deepafrica.com for a slash blog. Um, now, the debuffrica.com for such blog, a blog, let me explain what a blog is. A blog is a collection of articles that has, um, that, that, that demonstrates, uh, I think my internet is not loading that well. Okay, it's loaded. That, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a collection of, of, um, of, 
uh, of articles um, that show your expertise in a certain area. So as a business, I would advise that you actually have a blog section of your website, um, the, an, an article section of your website. The reason for that, I'm going to explain it when you get to the last day, uh, when you're talking about SEO. It's a really critical part of it, and I'm going to delve into it. But it basically gives, um, it gives an explanation um, to people about areas of your business. And so, um, it's a blog is a collection of articles. Now there are certain websites that are purely blogs. Like for instance, I've talked about this before in other episodes. Um, I I personally own East Africa Travel Tips, which is yeah my connection is not very fast, uh, which is uh, a travel blog um, that is purely a blog. It's just a collection of articles. It does not have like a products page. It does not have. Um, it does not have a lot of the other things. It's basically a collection of articles, and that's that's probably that's what you're referring to as a blog. So I would say that every business needs to have a blog because it's good for SEO. But if you just want to run a blog on its own, you by there actually also by following what we're going to be teaching today, you're going to be able to set up a blog for yourself. But um, a blog is basically just a collection of articles. Like you can see, these are just a collection of articles that are out there uh, on on different areas. So that's that. So that's the difference between a blog and a website. Um, I think you got the answer, Nigel. I think it's the, the name is Nigel. Um, Uh, Vic, uh, Orina Victor. Now, because this is a beginner, you are asking uh, using a programming language or a template. Now, we are going to be using um, we are going to be using a platform called WordPress. We're going to use WordPress to create this, so it's 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 template based. Part of the reason why we are doing that is because it is aimed at people who are complete beginners, who do not understand programming. I don't want people to have to learn programming to create a website for themselves. So in this case, it's just going to be um, using uh, using templates, and you're going to customize those templates to be um, to look good for your website. And again, mo most people can be able. Most people, actually, even me, who understands programming languages. Um, do most of the times I build using WordPress because it's faster and it's easier, and so um, I don't want to have to reinvent a wheel. I'm uh, just looking for other questions that are here. Uh, you're saying that you need programming skills, Arina asked again. No, you do not need programming skills. You do not need, you, all you need to do to know is how to use a computer. Now, as you've, you've seen the, the, the tutorial that I've had with you today, it's not been a technical one, and I'm not planning for it to be technical at all um, for you. Um, now the site that we're going to be building, uh, now uh, Tony Sirengo, we are going to build the site on online. We're going to build it on uh, online because we're assuming you're building a website for your business. You do not want to have the complexities of having to launch and having to move it from local host. Many of the people watching may not know what local host is compared to having it, um, it um, like building it online straight. So we're going to be building it online straight. That's part of the reason why you would need to have uh, you'll need to have um, uh, a domain name and hosting for you to be able to follow along with this tutorial. Uh, Mathy is asking, can you design the website for you instead of uh, if you don't want to build it yourself? Yes. Part of the reason why we are running this, uh, this campaign is just to let people know that we do web design and we are good at it. And so you can entrust us with your web design projects that we can do the design for you in case you find this difficult or in case you want, you're finding that this may not be uh, something that you're interested in learning and you want somebody to use, but you still need a website for yourself. You can get us to design a website for you. We are more than happy to design websites for you. So in case you have a question about building, having a website designed for you, just go to deepafrica.com. Um, let's just go there. Uh, sorry. Deepafrica.com. Um, again, you'll pardon me because the connection on my internet is not very good. Uh, so I apologize if that's not uh, connecting very well. 
Uh, just let me know if your, your stream connection is okay. Uh, so departfrica.com and just start a live chat with us. Um, okay. Something I've learned, live streaming and loading websites do not work very well together. So you'll open a live chat. Uh, again, that's not loading fast enough for me. Um, again, that's been the case with most of the, these other websites that have started loading of late. Um, uh, Nicholas David is asking for a link of the website of, of the slides. Yes, I'm going to provide the links of the site. Thank uh, Bakoya saying that uh, learning a lot. I'm glad that you are. Um, the end product someone is asking for the end product of the website we'll be developing now the thing about it is i have not started developing the site i'm going to be doing it with you so the things that i've talked about right now as assignments are things that i'm going to do myself so um there's no end product we're going to do it together so i'll show you how it's going to look so we're going to go through the process together and you're going to see how it's going to look Okay, I think we, I'll want to end it there. Um, my battery is almost gone. I just want to uh, just do one thing for you. I uh, just request you to do one thing for me. Uh, if you have enjoyed going through this, uh, or you've learned something, or you want to provide feedback about what's going on, please go to deepafrica.com forward slash feedback, and you're going to be redirected to a form where you're going to be able to fill and tell us what you think about the webinar uh, and uh, help us to get better. Now, I want to end it here. Thank you so much. I'm going to try and reply to all the comments. Uh, and thank you, guys. Thank you, my team, for helping me um, answer the questions in here. Uh, I'm happy that it was an eye-opener. Uh, I'm really glad that it's something that was useful for all of you guys. Thank you so much for your participation. I really, really, really am grateful. I'm humbled that we have um, the number of people who have come in today. Asante Nisana. I want to close this webinar at this time because um, we need to get ready and go do assignments. So go do your assignments. Get ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, we are going to be talking about um setting up the foundation so the domain name hosting doing the framework that we'll need to build the website on so basically setting up wordpress setting up installing wordpress uh, and getting that ready for your website to be set up and i'm going to be showing you on how to do it myself right now we are going to be using um i i bought a domain name weddingdress.co.ke so weddingdress.co.ke is what we are going to be building what i'm going to be building on and as you can see right now it's blank i've not started building on it as i told you before and this is what we are going to be i'm going to show you how i set this up um and i'm going to we are then going to install wordpress